What's good guys, Fantasy Joe back here with some more fantasy football content. Today I am talking week one fantasy football takeaways. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button, post a ton of in-season content. If you want to bring home that fantasy football championship, hit that subscribe button, it's that simple. And if you guys are new, please like button and any hit me up in the comment section down below or respond to all comments, but that really helps out the videos. Alrighty, let's scroll down. So starting with this Ravens Chiefs game, fantasy football takeaways from this. A, don't panic on Mark Andrews. He's going to be fine. B, I think Isaiah likely is going to be a relevant fantasy football factor for the rest of the year on the Ravens side. Moving over to the Chiefs, A, I think Rasheed Rice is going to be very good for fantasy football this year. I think Xavier Worthy is going to be good. And I think Isaiah Pacheco is locked into that workhorse role. Let's keep moving to this Packers-Eagles game. <clears throat> Josh Jacob looking very good in his role. Ton of volume. Jaden Reed looks like the number one wide receiver for the Packers. Christian Watson there as well, though. On the Eagles side, Saquon Barkley. Plenty of opportunity. People are worried about him not getting that goal line roll. He's got plenty of opportunities to score touchdowns, even if they're not right on the goal line. But he got that carry from the two, which was nice to see. They're still using the Philly push, but um, Barkley's going to have plenty of opportunities to score fantasy points around the goal line, scoring from outside, just being the guy on that offense. He was definitely the, the guy. Moving on, Steelers-Falcons, uh, George Pickens, great target uh, workload for him, was on the field a lot. For the Falcons, Bijan was the guy, Kyle Pitts was playing every down. Um, you know, not the, the look they were going for, they had several turnovers in this game, but uh, everything but you hope to be really fancy relevant, I'd say Drake London maybe didn't have the best game, but I think better days are ahead for the Falcons offense. Cardinals, Bills, pretty much just everything we expected from them. James Cook still that lead back. Uh, pretty ambiguous wide receiver situation still for the Bills, but we'll see more stuff come around on that. Marvin Harrison Jr., I wouldn't panic. He played a ton of snaps. The targets will come, um, but definitely, you know, worrisome with him getting so few, but brighter days ahead. Titans, Bears, <clears throat> one thing I wanted to point out here, leader for the Bears and targets was Keenan Allen. DJ Moore, I still expect to be in there, but it's DJ Moore and Keenan, so I expect them to be the one, two on this roster. Uh, as far as the Titans go, Pollard is the lead back there, unfortunately, right now. Um, he's the back to own. Obviously, I don't want that to happen. Um, well, I was just high on Tajay Spears. I think Tajay Spears is a better running back. I think they will find that out over time as well. I still think it will end up Tajay's job, but um, the roles are quite clear, and Pollard is the back to own right now. So I have to be honest with everybody there. Patriots, Bengals. Uh, I think you can kind of throw this game out for the Bengals. Um Really crappy, but you just got to hope that when hopefully T. Higgins is back relatively shortly, Jamar Chase actually practices this week. They can just get things rolling heading into Kansas City this upcoming week. Um, but definitely, you know, tough for them there. I will say one thing, the big takeaway, Zach Moss is the lead back for that Bengals roster. Um, that was another thing that was clear. Zach Moss is the guy there at a touchdown. Um, except him to be good for fantasy football moving forward. Texans, Colts, one thing to watch out for, no targets for Jonathan Taylor. That's worrisome. Anthony Richardson was fantastic for fantasy. Um, was running the ball on the goal line as well. That's another thing to look out for. Texans, uh, Nico was the leader. Tank Dell was second. And Simon Diggs was third. Diggs had the touchdowns. But I expect it to go Nico, Tank Dell, and then uh, Stephon Diggs, or maybe even Tank Dell, Nico some weeks, depending. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Okay, so moving on to this Jaguars. So there's a way on the exit off of this. This Jaguars Dolphins game. Some takeaways for this one for sure. I've got two big ones. Let's start with Devon H. A. The exciting one. He had seven receptions in this game, ten carries. That's the kind of the workload you're hoping to see from him. Um, him and Moser both got banged up a little bit, but if A. J. gets that type of workload, ten to twelve carries. Uh, four to five receptions a game. I think he's going to be really good for fantasy football. I think that's what you're kind of hoping for. And that is definitely the role he had this first week. Um, very exciting for your a chain owner, especially you had to spend high draft capital on this, this year. We'll see if he holds up over the stretch, but that's a question with every player. And right now, Devon a chain looks locked into a really fantastic role for fantasy football. Uh, moving over to the Jaguars, Tank Bigsby and uh, Kyron, not Kyron, Travis Etienne, excuse me. We're in a full split as far as carries go in the backfield. Uh, Tank Bigsby actually had more yards. 
they've been trying to get Tank more involved. It looks like they're forcing their hand, and Tank Bigsby was actually successful this week. I think that's the biggest takeaway. Tank Bigsby was good in his utilization, which has never happened in the past, um, which makes me think they will try to lighten that load off of ETN with Tank. Doesn't mean ETN can't be valuable for fantasy football. He had that touchdown yesterday, but it doesn't temper your expectations for him moving forward. He's not going to be that same type of volume beast. But expect his efficiency and the numbers to go up. I'm still uh, happy to be an ETN owner, but like I said, temper those expectations. This Panthers Saints game, main takeaways Panthers are tough. Panthers are tough. If you were about playing against some fantasy value from them, every team has got some fantasy value, but temper your expectations. My goodness, the Panthers looked awful. Saints dominated. Uh, Taysom Hill, I think, is going to be a thing this year. You can start him in your tight end spot if you're lower down. We've got you know, some number of injuries with Joku and Ferguson this week. We'll be talking about that in the waiver wire video coming up tomorrow. Another reason to hit the subscribe button. But <clears throat> Vikings Giants. Vikings look pretty solid. Darnold looked like a command of the offense, had a decent night. Uh, Giants, Wondell Robinson led the way with 12 targets. Malik was involved as well. I think he had seven, maybe even a little bit more. Um, but both those guys were involved. Uh, you know, Giants, Daniel Jones was tough too. Daniel Jones was tough. Um, you hope for brighter days ahead for both these teams. Raiders, Chargers, a uh, big takeaway, Dobbins. Dobbins looked fantastic. He wasn't the starter to begin, but we knew they were going to utilize both backs. He was definitely the one more juice. Um, one thing I will point out, we'll say that Achilles injuries holds up over the season, coming off of it first season. I remember James Robinson a few years ago at the beginning of the season looked very hot, had some long touchdown runs, and then really teetered off after about week five. That's my only real concern with Dobbins, but it looks like he's got the lead as of right now, on that running back job there. Um, so that's definitely something to note. Moving down to these Broncos Seahawks. So it, this one was tough. Give me some details. We're going to have to take a, a deeper look at this game uh, just because I wanted to point out a few stat things here because I think it is a little bit of a complicated situation. Let's go to stats. So starting with the Broncos, Thing I want to point out, Javante Williams out carried by Jaleel McLaughlin. Um, the efficiency wasn't really there for either of them, but he was also out caught by Jaleel McLaughlin. Um, looks like Jaleel is probably the back to own there right now. Obviously, you know it wasn't that they got completely you know annihilated, but um, they definitely lost pretty good. Uh, and then taking a look over here, Kevin Walker was fantastic for fantasy football. Seven targets for Tyler Lockett, not what you want to see if you're a JSN owner. Um, DK, I'm perfectly fine with him to bounce back, but that's basically the takeaways from that game um, as of right now. <clears throat> Moving back, not many games to go, and again, it'll be in the game tonight, obviously, um, but I can't predict the future. I want to give you guys some fancy takeaways. Once that first week or most of it's under our belts, it's exciting to just get on the board and talk about it. This Cowboys-Browns game was an absolute... Uh, you know, the Cowboys just kicked the crap out of the Browns, so that's why that score is so lopsided. Uh, Browns, Deshaun Watson didn't look great. Cooper's going to be the one there. Uh, we knew all that. Jerome Ford is definitely the lead back. And as far as the Cowboys go, you're starting C.D. Lamb. Ferguson's hurt. The running backs are basically splitting, so pick your poison with them. Commanders, Buccaneers. Jaden Daniels ran all over. That's what you love to see. Wasn't the greatest night passing the ball, but for fantasy football, he's going to score a lot of points. Buccaneers, Baker looked good. That's what I will say. Baker, I was impressed by um, that offense. Just a lot of good things for them. Rams, Lions, some takeaways I have here. Jamison Williams, first off, he is a guy to own. He is going to be legit this year. We talked about him. You know, They talked him up all camp. He's coming in that number two goal finally. Is he going to be utilized? He is. He was fantastic for fantasy football last night. Five receptions over 100 yards, touchdown. Like I said, just a great night. He's a talented player. Um, I'm all in on Jamison Williams moving forward. Not that he's going to be, you know, maybe a league winner, but I think he's definitely has fantasy value. He's going to be utilized at each and every week and has a very high ceiling. A guy that you could definitely play any week, I feel like, moving forward. Not going to be the most consistent, but what wide receivers are outside the very top elite guys. Another takeaway of this game, Cooper Cup. We saw Puka to go down. Cooper Cup is going to be super heavily utilized moving forward. If you've got him, fantastic. If you can trade for him on the cheap, not a bad idea by any means. And the Rams side of the ball, another thing, Kyron. Kyron was heavily utilized, outsnapped uh, Ronnie Rivers and the rest, Blake Corum by a ton. Uh, very confident in his workload moving forward. I do think Blake Corum will play more and more as the season progresses. 
But as of now, Kyron is still locked into that role. Ignore the punt returner, talk, all that stuff. Alrighty, I was able to give you guys every single week one fantasy football takeaway, but I was able to give you a lot of them. Stick around, watch out for waiver wire video tomorrow. I'll be giving you guys more actionable content, things like that. Uh, I'll be coming back later with our series on buy low, sell highs as well. Just giving you all the information to get that edge on all your friends and family and bring home that fantasy football championship. So hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. If you have any questions or comments, drop them in the comment section down below. Our spot as always, this is Fantasy Joe.